<laughs> now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I plan to wed thee on another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. <laughs> Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Amelia. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. <clears throat> Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to her death, or to this man, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your mother should be as God. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. <coughs> so is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your mother's voice, the other should be held the worthier. I would my mother looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with her judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or adjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, and examine well your blood, whether if you yield not to your mother's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, for I to be in shady cloistered mewed. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, on that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your mother's will, or wed Demetrius. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, relinquish thou crazy title to my certain rights. You have her mother's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry her? Scornful Lysander. True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius. But which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Neter's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon the spotted and inconstant man. I must confess I have heard so much, and to have Demetrius spoke thereof, but overfull with self-affairs, my mind did lose it. Fair Hermia, Look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your mother's will, or the law of Athens yields you up to death or to vow a single life. Come, Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well but team it from the tempest of my eyes. <laughs> I me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged, too young! Oh, hell, to love by another's eyes! Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child, and she respects me as her only son. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy mother's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander! 
Leander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest foe, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, which knit his souls and prosper loves, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly I will meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Oh. Oh. Look, here comes Helena. <laughs> Godspeed, fair Helena, whither away. Call you me, fair? Oh, happy fair, Demetrius loves oh. your fair. Oh, that fair again, unsay. My ear should catch your voice, my eye, your eye, my tongue, should catch your tongue, sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius, being baited the rest I give to be you, translated. Oh, teach me how to look, and by what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move! The more I hate him, the more he follows me. The more I love him, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine? Take comfort. He shall no more see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Upon a time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. <laughs> Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time that lover's flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet playfellow, and pray thou for us. Good luck, grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, for we must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helen, adieu, as you on him, Demetrius dote on you. <laughs> Oh, how happy some or other some can be. And through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, holding no quantity, Love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyes, he hailed down oath that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight, and then to the wood tomorrow night will he pursue her. Oh, for this intelligence, if I had thanks, it is a dear expense, but herein mean I to enrich my pain and, and have his sight thither and back again. You are best to call them generally, one by one, according to the script. Uh, here is the scroll of everyone's name, which is thought fit to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. Well, first, good Petra Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors. You're so good to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Yeah. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. <laughs> now, good Petra Quince, uh, call forth your actors by the scroll. Players, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver? Ready? Name what part I am for and proceed. Uh, you, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? Is he a lover? <laughs> or a tyrant? <laughs> A lover who kills himself most gallant for love. Well, that will last some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look through their eyes. I will move storms. Uh, Francis... The raging rocks and the shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. Francis...
at Vivis's car shall shine from far and make and mar those foolish fates. <laughs> this was lofty. Well, name the rest of the players. <laughs> Francis Flute, the bellows bender. <clears throat> Here, Petra Quint. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. Hmm. Who is Thisbe? A wandering knight? <laughs> it is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> 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 Nay. Well, in faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. <laughs> That's all one. You may play it in a mask, and you shall speak as small as you will. It's not. And I may hide my face. Oh, let me play Thisbe, too. I, I will speak in a monstrous little mm. voice. <clears throat> Thisbe, Thisbe. Proceed. <sighs> Robin Starveling, the tailor. Mm, here, Petra Quint. Uh, Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Uh, Kate Snout, the joiner. Here, Petra Quint. Uh, you, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Uh, Snug, the joiner, you, the lion's part. And I hope here's a play finished. <laughs> uh, 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 have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Oh, oh, let me play the lion too. I will roar that will make any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that will make the duke say, let him roar again. Roar! And? Let him roar again. And you should do it so terrible you would fright the Duchess and the ladies that they would shriek and that were enough to hang us off. That would hang us every mother's son. I will roar as gently as any suckling dog. I will roar as it were a nightingale. You may play no part but Pyramus. miss. Well, I will undertake it. Oh, players, here are your parts. <clears throat> and I am to entreat you, to request you, and to desire you to con them by tomorrow night. And meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we shall rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we will be dogged with company on our devices known. Okay. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of property such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. There we will meet, and we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. At Take the pains. Duke's be perfect. Oak we adieu. <clears throat> At the Duke's oak we meet. Enough! Uh, hold or cut bow strings. Wander you over hill, over dale, through brush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's fear, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green, the cowslips tall, her penseners be, in their gold coat spots, you see, those be Ruby's fairy favors. In those freckles live their savors. I must go, seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl on every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou blob of spirits. I'll be gone, our queen and all her elves shall come here anon. Ah, uh, uh, the king, 
doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen, come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell in wrath, because that she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. Oh, she never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear, or spangled starlight sheen. Oh, but they do square that all their elves, for fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite. Told Robin Goodfellow, are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery? Skim milk and sometimes labor in the quern, and bootless makes the breathless housewife churn. And sometimes makes a drink to bear no barm. Misleads night wanderers, laughing at their harm. Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck. You do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? <laughs> Thou speakest aright. <laughs> oh, I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I am fat, bean-fed horse begow, neighing in likeness of a filly foal. <laughs> oh, sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl in the very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and on her with her dewlap pour the ale. <laughs> oh, the wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale. Sometimes, for three-foot stool mistaketh me, then slip I from her bum, down topples she. <laughs> Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh, and waxing in their mirth, and knees and swear, a merrier hour was never wasted there. <laughs> But room, fairies, here comes Oberon. Here come my mistress, would that he were gone. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stole away from fairyland and in the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn and versing a love to amorous Phyllida. Why art thou here, come from the farthest steep of India? But that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress and your warrior love. To Theseus must be wedded and you have come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Oh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since a middle summer spring met we on hill and dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beach at margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, Thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the wind, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, hath sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which, falling in the land, hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Well, therefore the moon, the governess of floods, Pale and haranger washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, the angry winter, change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. 
And in the spice of Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sand, marking the embarked traders on the flood, when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind. But she, being mortal, of the boy did die, and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me the boy and I will go with thee. Oh, not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide down right if I longer stay. My gentle puck, come hither. <laughs> Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once, whose juice laid on sleeping eyelids will make or man or woman madly doped on the next live creature that it sees. Bring me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in. Forty minutes. <laughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania as she sleeps, and drop the liquor of it in the, her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, she shall pursue with the soul of love. <laughs> ah, but who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear this conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll stay, the other stayeth me. Thou toldst me they had stolen none of this place, and here I am, wood within this wood, because I cannot find them. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, and yet you draw not iron, for my heart is as true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? D do I speak you fair? Or do I not in plainest truth tell you that I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, I do love you the more. I am your spaniel, Demetrius, and the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me as you use your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave to follow you, unworthy as I am. What worse or place can I beg in your love? So a place of high respect with me, and then to be used as you use your dog. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I do not look upon you. You impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself to the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. <clears throat> your patience is my virtue. Uh, that, I think, is not night when I see your face. Therefore, I think I am not night, nor doth the what lack worlds of company, for you in my respect are all the world. Uh, then how can it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. Oh, run when you will. The story shall be changed. <laughs> Bootless speed when valor flies and cowardice pursues. <laughs> I will not stay thy questions. Hence, let me go. And if thou choose to follow me, do not believe, but I will do thee mischief in uh, the wood. Fie! In the town, in the temple, in the fields, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, you set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not meant to woo. <laughs> oh, I'll follow thee and make a heaven of a hell to die upon the hands I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. <laughs> Hast that the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. <laughs> I pray thee, give it to me. 
I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox slips and nodding violets grow, quite over canopied with luscious woodbines, with sweet musk roses and eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled by these flowers with dances and delights. And with this juice, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Take thou some too and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady in love with a disdainful youth. <laughs> Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. <laughs> thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. <laughs> yes. Fear not, my lord, your servants shall do so. Roundel, sing me now to sleep, then to your offices and let me rest. <laughs> true love take, love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or bear or cat, pod or boar with bristled hair. <laughs> In thy eye what shall appear when thou dost wake is thy dear, awake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I have forgot our way. We'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you a bed, for upon this bank I will rest my head. Uh, 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 one turf uh. shall serve as pillow for us both. Uh. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. Oh, take the sense, sweet, of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchanged with an oath, so then two bosoms and a single troth. Then by your side no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander riddles very prettily. Now much be shrew, my manners and my pride of Hermia was to say that Lysander lied. But gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off yet in human modesty. Such separation, as well may be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far, be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love never alter till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen to that fair prayer say I, and end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. With half that wish the wisher's eyes be pressed. Through 
the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force and stirring love. <laughs> Night in silence, who is here? Oh, weeds of Athens he doth wear, this is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. Oh, and here the maiden, sleeping sound on the oh, dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, oh, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Oh. Churl, <laughs> upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakes, let love forbid, sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I'm gone, for I must now to Oberon. <laughs> Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. What? Wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so! Stay! On thy peril, I alone will go! <laughs> Whew! I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the less there is my grace. <laughs> but who is here? Lysander on the ground? Dead? Or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Uh, Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom lets me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Lysander, say not so. What? And though he love your Hermia, what? What? Though he get Hermia, still loves you, and then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? The will of man is by reason swayed, and reason says you are the worthier maid. Things growing are not ripe till their season, so I, being young till now, ripe not to reason, and touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will, and leads me to your eyes where I overlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve such scorn? It's not enough, young man, it's not Enough that I, I did never, no, nor never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eyes. But now you must flout my insufficiency. <laughs> good troth, you do me wrong, sir. Good sooth, you do in such a deficient manner me to woo. But fare ye well. Oh, perforce, I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. <laughs> oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia? Sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me. Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I, me, for pity, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how I quake with fear. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord, what, gone? Out of hearing? No sound, no word? Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. No, then I'll perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you, I'll find immediately.
Are we all met? Oh, cat, cat. Ah, and here's a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. We will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Uh, Petra Quince. What sayest thou, bully bottom? Oh, there are some things in this comedy of Pyramus Thisbe that will never do. Uh, first, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Fire Lakin, a parlous fear. I do believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Oh, not a whit. I have a device to make all well. <laughs> Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And, for the better more assurance, let them know that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom, the weaver. Now, this will put them out of their fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it will be written in eight and six. No, uh, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? <laughs> Uh, I fear it, I promise you. Uh, players, we got to consider with ourselves to bring in. God shield us. A lion amongst the ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell she is not a lion. Oh, nay. Uh, we must name her name, and half of her face must be seen through the lion's neck, uh, where she will speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, um, uh, ladies, or, or fair ladies, um, I would wish you, or uh, I would entreat you, or I would request you, not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, twere pity on my life. Nay, I am no such thing. I am a person as other people are. And there let her name her name, and tell them plainly that she is snug, the joiner. Uh, well, it shall be so. But there's two hard things. That is, to bring moonlight into a chamber, for you know Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. But doth the moon shine that night we play our play? A, a calendar. A calendar. Look in the almanac. Uh, find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yeah. Yes, it doth shine that night. <laughs> Why, then we may leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play our play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. <laughs> I, or else, one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say they come to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. <clears throat> And then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe <clears throat> says the story did talk through the chink of a wall. <clears throat> oh, you can never bring in a wall. <laughs> what say you, Bottom? Someone or other must present wall and let her have some uh, plaster or some loam or some rough cast about her to signify wall. And let her hold her fingers, uh, thus. And through this cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. Hmm. Well, if that may be, then all is well. Come sit you down, every mother's child, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. Once you've spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone according to their cue. <clears throat> And homespuns have we swaggering here. So near the cradle of the fairy queen? <gasps> what a play towards. Oh, I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause? <laughs> This be the flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors, 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 savor sweet. So hath thy breath, thy dearest this be dear. But heart, a voice, stay but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. <sighs> a stranger fairness than e'er played here. <laughs> Must I speak now? Yes. 
must do, for you must understand, he goes but to see a noise that he has heard and is to come again. <coughs> Mo hmm? Most noble pyramids, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and eke most lovely Jew, the truest, truest horse that yet would never tire on the pyramids in any's tomb. Oh, Ninus tomb, man. You must not speak that yet. Uh. That you must answer to Pyramus. You speak your part all at once. Cuse it all. Oh. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tire. <clears throat> As true as true as Taurus that yet would never tire. If I were fair, fair this be, I were only thine. <laughs> oh, monstrous! <laughs> to make me afeard. Oh, now we're changed. What do I see on me? What do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? Bless thee, bottom. Bless thee. Thou art translated. I see their knavery. This is to make an ass out of me, to frighten me if they can. I will not stir from this place. Do what they will. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing. And they will hear that I am not afraid. No! Ah! <laughs> the weasel cocks are black of hill with orange tawny bill. The throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. <laughs> What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The fish, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo gray, whose note many a man doth bark, and day is not answered there. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtues force perforce doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Uh, methinks, <sighs> mistress, you have little reason to say that. And to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. <laughs> Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Well, not so, neither. Uh, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I'd have enough to serve my own turn. Uh, out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flower dost sleep, and I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy Spirit go, peace blossom, cobweb, mustard seed. Ready, and I, and I, where, where shall, shall we go? go? Oh, be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. 
feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bag steals from the humble bees, and four night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes. To have my love to bed and to arise and pluck the wings from painted butterflies, to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes, nod to him elves and do him courtesies. <laughs> hail, mortal. Hail, hail. I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. Oh, I shall desire you of more acquaintance, Mistress Cobweb. If I cut my finger, mm. I shall make bold with you. Yeah. <laughs> and your name, honest gentlewoman? Peas Blossom. Oh. Good, Mistress Peas Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and Master Peas Cod, your father. I shall desire you of more acquaintance, too, good Mistress Peas Blossom. I beseech your worship's name. Mustard Seed. Oh, good Mistress Mustard Seed. I know your patience well. That same cowardly, giant-like ox beef had devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your kindred hath made my eyes water ere now. I shall desire you of more acquaintance too, good Mistress Mustard Seed. <laughs> Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. Tie up my lover's tongue, bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awakened, then what next came in her eye that she must dote on in extremity? <laughs> oh. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule in this haunted grove? <sighs> my mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> uh, near to her close and consecrated bower, when she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals, that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play <laughs> intended for great Theseus's nuptial day. The shallowest, thick-skinned of that barren sort who Pyramus presented in their sport forsook his seat and entered in a break, where I did him at this advantage take. An ass is null, I fix it on his head. <laughs> Oh, anon, his thisbe must be answered. And forth, my mimic comes, when they him spy, sever themselves, and madly sweep the sky. So at his sight, away his fellows fly. And at our sight, here over and over one falls. He murder cries, and help from Athens calls. Their sense, thus weak, lost with their fear, thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. I led them on, and distracted fear and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> this falls out better than I could have devised. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side. So when he waked of force, she must be eyed. Ah, stand close, this is the same Athenian. Oh, oh, this is the woman. But this is not the man. Oh, why rebuke you, he who hates you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, bring o'er shoes in blood, plunge in the deep, and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as him to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart by your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright and as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Ah, good Demetrius, will thou give him me? 
I would rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out dog, out cur! Thou drifts me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Oh, once, tell true, tell true, even for my sake. Durst thou look upon him, being awake? Hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch. Could not a worm, an adder, do so much? An adder did it, for doubler tongued in thine, thou serpent! Adder never stung. You spend your passions on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee then, tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege to never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. It's therefore for a while I shall remain. <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love sight. Ah, and fate all rules. That one man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion, see thou bring her here again. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go. I go. Look how I go. Swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit by Cupid's archery, sink in the apple of his eye. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy man, Helena, is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageancy? Lord, what fools these mortals be. <laughs> Stand aside, the noise they make shall cause Demetrius to awake. Well, then we'll two at once woo one. <laughs> well, that must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me that football preposterously. <laughs> oh, 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 why should you think that I should woo and scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look when I vow, I weep, and vows so born in their nativity. All truth appears. Why do these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. Oh, devilish holy fray, when truth kills truth, these these vows are hardy as. But will you give her or? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none now you give her or. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. <laughs> oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, divine. Oh. To what my love should I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, thy lips, kissing cherries, tempting grow, that pure, congealed white, high torses snow, fanned with the eastern wind, turns to a crow when thou holdst up thy hand. Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Ah! Bite! Oh, hell! I see you are all set to bend against me for your merriment. If you were civil and new courtesy, you would not do me thus such injury. Can, can you not hate me, as I know you do, but now must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you, you would not use a gentle lady so to bow and swear and super praise my parts when I am sure you must hate me in your hearts. You are both rivals to love Ernia, and now are rivals to mock Helena? Such a rim exploit, a manly enterprise to, to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. None of a noble sort would so offend a virgin all to make you sport. 
You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia, this you know I know. And here with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield you up my part. Oh, and yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, I will none. If ever I loved Hermia, all that love is gone. My heart was to her guestwise sojourned, and now it is to Helen home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest thou will buy it. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Dark night! Oh, that from the eye the function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the seeing sense, pays hearing double recompense. For it was not mine eye, Lysander, found mine ear, I think, it to let me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that could not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more in guilt the night than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. And now I see they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. An injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired? Have you with these conjoined to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel we have shared, all, all sisters' vows, all the hours where we have shed the hasty foot of time for parting us, all is all forgot, all school days friendship, all, all childhood innocence? And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in mocking your poor friend? Tis not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I'm amazed at your words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and, and praise my eyes and face? And have you not set your other love, Demetrius, who even now did spurn me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander Whoa. deny your love so rich within your soul and tender me for sooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths at me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled, but fare ye well to Partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, and hear my oh. excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Oh, do not scorn her so. <laughs> if she cannot entreat, I can compel. <laughs> Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. <laughs> Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. <laughs> Helen, I love thee, by my life I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee, to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it Quick, to. come on, I see her. Where to tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing. Let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. What change is this? Why, do you, why are you grown so rude, sweet love? Thy love? Out, Tawny Tartar, out! Out, loathed medicine! Oh, hated potion, hence! Do you not jest? <laughs> yes, sooth, and so do you! Demetrius, no. I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I would not trust your word. What, shall I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I will not harm her so. Can you do me more greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, what news is this, my love? Am, am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing truer, tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Ah, 
me. You juggler, you canker blossom, <laughs> you thief of love. What? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, in faith. Have you no modesty, no touch of bashfulness, no maiden shame? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. <gasps> puppet? Why so? Ah, uh, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, her personage, her <laughs> tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. What, are you grown so high in his esteem because I'm so dwarfish and low? How low am I, painted maple? Speak, how low am I? Not yet so low that my nails can't reach unto <laughs> thy eyes. Oh, 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 gentlemen, I pray you, though you mock me, let her not harm me. <laughs> I was never cursed. I have no gift at all for shrewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardness. You may think that I am something lower than myself, that I may match her. Lower? Hark <laughs> again! Oh, 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 oh gentle Hermia, <laughs> do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia, did ever keep your counsel, never wronged you, save that in love and true Demetrius, I told him of your spell unto the torch. Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little? Again? Uh, uh, Nothing but uh, low and little. Uh, Why do you suffer her to flout me thus? Uh, Let me come uh, to her. Uh, 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 get you gone, you dwarf. <laughs> now she holds me not. Now follow if thou darest, and see of whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow me. I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. <laughs> you mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. <laughs> I'll no longer trust you, nor keep your cursed company. <laughs> your hands are quicker for a fray, but my legs are long enough to run away. I'm amazed and know not what to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is thy negligence. Uh, Forgive me, king of shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? And so far, blameless proves my enterprise that I anointed in Athenian's eyes. And so far, am I glad it so did sort? Is this their jangling I esteem a sport? <laughs> Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Ere therefore, Robin, overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray, as one come not within another's way, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep, with laden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eyes, whose juice hath this virtuous property, to take thence all air of his might, and make his eyeballs rule with wanted sight. And then, when they awake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will from charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. Up and down. Up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared and field in town. God will lead them up and down. <laughs> Ooh, here comes one. <laughs> <laughs> Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Oh, follow me then to Pointer Brown. <laughs> Lysander? Speak again, thou runaway, thou coward. Art thou fled? Where dost thou hide thy head? In some bush? Oh, thou coward. Art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookest for wars and wilt not come? Come, recreant. Come, thou child. Yea, 
What thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. <laughs> He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter heeled than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. That fallen am I in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Abide me if thou darest, for well I won't. Thou'st run before me, shifting every place, neither to stop nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then thou mockst me. <clears throat> but by this, if ever I thy face by daylight see, Fate constrains me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, 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 oh weary night. Oh, long and tedious night. Abate thy hours and sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes. Steal me from my own company a while. <laughs> Hit but three. Ah, come one more. Two of both kinds makes up four. Ah, here she comes, cursed and sad. <laughs> Cupid is a knavish lad, best to make poor females mad. Never so weary. Never so in woe, I can no further crawl, no further go. Here, I will rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander, if it means a fray. <laughs> On the ground, sleeping sound, I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakes, thou takes sweet delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known that every man should take his own in your waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his merrigan and all shall be well. <laughs> Come sit thee down upon this flowery bed while I thy amiable cheeks do coy and stick musk roses in thy sleek smooth head and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. <laughs> Where's Peas Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Uh, where's Mistress Cobweb? Ready. A uh, good mistress, uh, get you your weapons in your hand and kill me a red hip humblebee on the top of a thistle. And good mistress, bring me the honey bag. <laughs> Do not fret yourself too much in the action, good mistress. Uh, and miss, take care that the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with honey bag. <laughs> Where's Mistress Mustard Seed? Ready. Give me your knee, good mistress. I pray you leave your courtesy. What your will? No, nothing. But to help cavalry cobweb scratch. <laughs> yeah. I must of the barbers, for I am marvelously hairy around the face, and I am but such a tender ass. If my hair do tickle me, I must scratch. <laughs> what wilt thou hear? Some music, my sweet love. Well, I have a reasonable good ear for music. Yeah. <laughs> the weasel come. Oh, or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Methinks I have a strong desire for a bottle of hay. <laughs> Good hay, sweet hay hath no fellow. 
I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. But I pray you, then let of your people bother me, uh, for I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Oh, sleep thou, and I'll wind thee in my arms. Fairy, be gone, and be always away. So doth the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle, gently entwist the female ivy so, and wrings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. <laughs> Welcome, good Robin. Thou seest this sweet sight. Her dotage now I do begin to pity, this hateful imperfection in her eyes. And, gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of that Athenian swine, that he, awaking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair. And think not of this night's accidents, but as a fierce vexation of a dream. But first I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast wont to be. See as thou wast wont to see. Dane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. Oh, my Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titania, music call and strike more dead than common sleep of all these the sense. Music hall music, such as charmeth sleep. Now, when thou wakes with thine own fool's eyes, peep. <laughs> Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly. And blessed to all, fair prosperity. Uh, fairy king, uh, attendant Mark, I do hear the morning lark. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Mountain tops to mark this musical confusion with hounds and echoes in conjunction. But soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep, and this Lysander, this Demetrius is, and this Helena, old netters, Helena. <laughs> I do wonder of their being here together. Uh, no doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and in hearing our intent, came here in grace of our solemnity. But speak, Amelia, is this not the day that Hermia should give answer to her choice? It is, my lord. Good morrow, friends. <laughs> Saint Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. 
How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy? To sleep by hate and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half waking. But as yet I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly would I speak. And now I do bethink me, so it is, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might without threat from Athenian law. Enough! Uh, enough! My lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lady. Fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither unto the wood, and I in fury hither followed them, fair Helen in fancy following me. But, my good lord, I, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is that my love for Hermia is as melted snow. It is but the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon, but now, by all the faith and all the virtue of my heart, the object and pleasure of my eye is only Helen. And I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. <laughs> Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, more we will hear. Anon, Amelia, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall be eternally knit. <laughs> three and three will hold a feast of great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. These things are small and indistinguishable, like far-off mountains turn it into clouds. Methinks I see these things with parted eye when everything seems double. And so, methinks, I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and... Not mine own. <laughs> do you, are you sure that we are awake, that we do not sleep, do not dream? Do you not think that the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my mother. <laughs> and Hippolyta. <laughs> and he did bid us follow to the temple. Then we are awake. Come, let us follow, and by the way, recount our dreams. <laughs> My cue comes, call me, and I will answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. Hey ho! Petra quits! Flute the bellows mender! Snuff the tinker! Starveling? God's my life, stolen hence, and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream. I passed the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go to expound this dream. I thought I was. Look, man cannot say what me thought I was. But me thought I had. Ah! A man is a past fool if he was too awful to say what me thought I had. The ear of man hath not seen, the eye of man hath not heard, or, or his hand to taste, or his tongue to conceive, or, or even my heart to report the dream it was. I shall get Petra Quince to write a ballad of this dream. And it shall be called Bottom's Dream, for it hath no bottom. And I will sing it at the latter end of the play before the Duke. <laughs> Friends! <laughs> Out of doubt, he is transported. 
Huh. If you come not forth, then... then the play is marred. <gasps> it go not forward, doth it? It is not possible. Oh. You have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus, is he? The, no. He hath simply the best wit of any man in Athens. I am the best person, too, and he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. Up. Oh, you must say paragon. Uh, a paramour is, God bless us, a thing of not. Masters! Sorry. The Duke is coming down from the temple. There are two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone forward, we have all been made men. Ah. Oh. oh, sweet bully bottom. <laughs> oh. Where are these friends? Where are these hearts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, most courageous day, a most happy hour. <gasps> I have to discourse wonders, but ask me not what. For if I tell you I am not true at uh -huh. I will tell you everything Pat that came out. <laughs> Let us hear sweet bottom. Oh, not a word of me. All I have to say is, the Duke mm. hath dined. Yeah. Well, get your apparel together. Good strings for your beards, new ribbons for your pumps. Meet up yeah. currently at the palace, and everyone look over their parts, for the long and short of it is, our play is preferred. Oh. <laughs> yes. But in any case, let yes. this be have clean linen, huh? Yes. And let her that plays the lion not pare her nails, for her huh? nails shall hang out as the lion's claws. <laughs> oh. And most of all, dear fellow actors, eat no onion nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I have no doubt they will say it is a sweet comedy, huh? If I know more words. Uh, away! Uh, away! Go uh, away! Uh, <laughs> uh, Come on! my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I may never believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Such tricks have strong imaginations, that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. Or in the night, imagining some fear, how easy a bush supposed to bear. But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesseth than fancy's images and gross to something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Ah, here come the lovers <laughs> full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> More than to us wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have to waste away the long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revel shall we have? Is there no play to ease the anguish of this torturing hour? <sighs> Here, mighty Theseus. Ah, say. What abridgments have we this evening? What music, what masks shall we have? How shall we beguile this time, if not with some delight? <laughs> A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love, Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical. <laughs> tedious and brief. <laughs> This is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. Go, bring them in, and ladies, take your place. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. <gasps> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this... Um, uh, 
If we offend, it is with our good will. <laughs> that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will. To show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. We do not, not come as minding to content you our true intent is. All for your delight we are not here. <sighs> that you should here repent you. The actors are at hand and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know. Oh. <laughs> this fellow doth not stand upon points. She hath read her prologue like a rough colt. She knows not to stop. Uh, a good moral, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Uh, her speech was like a tangled chain. <laughs> Who is next? <laughs> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. <laughs> This one with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This one with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine, for, if you would know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus' tomb. There, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat, with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling, bloody breast. And Thisbe, uh. tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. <laughs> For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. Oh, no wonder, my lord. One lion may speak when many asses do. <laughs> <clears throat> In this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. <laughs> and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a cranny hole or chink through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall, the truth is so. And this, the cranny, is right and sinister through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? It's the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Ah, Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. Mm -hmm. Oh, grim looks, knight. Oh, knight with you so black. Oh, knight, whichever art when day is not. Oh, knight. Oh, knight. Alack, alack, alack. I fear thy Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou wall, oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine. And wall, oh wall, oh sweet, oh lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Oh, I thank thee, wall. Jove show thee well for this. But what see I? Oh, no Thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall, to whom I've seen no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. Oh. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. 
oh, oh, uh, no, in truth, sir, he should not. You see, deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to come out, and I am to spy her through the hole in the wall. You will see, it will fall pat, just as I told you. Yonder she comes. a voice. Now will I to the chink to blink and I may spy my Thisbe's face. Thisbe? My love. Now what my love I think. Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace and oh. like Lymander am I trust thee still. Oh and I like Helen till the fates me kill. Not shaftless to Procris was so true. Oh, as shaftless to Procris so I to you. Kiss me for the whole of this vile wall! Oh. <coughs> I kiss the walls all, not your lips at all. Oh, wilt thou meet me at <coughs> Minnie's tomb straight away? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. <laughs> Have I wall mm. my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. Now is the wall down between the two neighbors? No remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. <gasps> Here comes two noble beasts in, a man and a lion. <laughs> You ladies, <laughs> you whose gentle hearts you fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. roar. <clears throat> Then know that I, as snug the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lion stam. For if I do as lion come in strife into this place, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast and of good conscience. <laughs> this lion is a very fox for his valor. <laughs> <laughs> true, and a goose for his discretion. <laughs> Not true, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. Uh, it is, well, leave it to his discretion and let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. He is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. <clears throat> this lanthorn doth the horned moon present, and I, myself, the man of the moon, seem to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put in the lanthorn. How else is it the man of the moon? <laughs> He dares not come there for the candle, for you see, it is already in snuff. <laughs> I am a weary of this moon, would he would change? Uh, it appears by his small light of discretion that he in this wane, but yet in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that this lanthorn, the moon, this, I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush and this dog, my dog. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. All hmm. these things should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes Thisbe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? <laughs> Well, <laughs> lion. Well, 
Well run, Tisby. Well shown, Moon. Truly the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused lion. <laughs> and then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. Sweet mood, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. <laughs> I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright, for by thy golden, gracious, glittering gleams. I trust to take the truest of this sight. <laughs> but stay, O oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dull is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear. <laughs> Thy mantle good. What? Stained with blood. <laughs> oh, oh, ye approach, ye furies fell. Oh, fates, come, come, cut threaded from. Quail, crush, concluded, quail. <laughs> this passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Oh, be shrew my heart, but I pity the man. <laughs> Wherefore didst thou lie its frame? Where lion thou hast deflowered, my dear, which is. No, no. Which was the greatest dame that, that ever lived, that loved, that lied, that looked with fear? Oh. Oh, come, tears, get down! Out sword and wound the path of Pyramus. I, the left pap, with a heart doth hop. Thus die I, thus, thus, thus. Now am I dead, now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Ah. Now die! 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 <laughs> die. No die but an ace for him, for he is but one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead. He is nothing. Uh, with the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and yet prove an ass. <laughs> How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover. Ah, by starlight she shall find him, and with her passion she ends the play. Oh, <laughs> methinks she should not use a long one on such a pyramus. I hope she will be brief. She has already spied him with those sweet eyes. <laughs> Asleep, my love? <laughs> what dead, my dove? Oh, speak, speak, quite dumb. A, a, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. This Red nose, his cherry lips, his yellow cow's lip cheeks are gone, and gone. Oh, be, 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 lovers make moan. Oh. His eyes were green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands. As pale as milk. <laughs> but lay them in gore since you are sure with shears his thread of silk. <laughs> Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. <laughs> Come, lay my breast in view. And farewell, friends. Thus, Thisbe ends. Oh, no. Adieu. Oh, no. 
Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. I and Wall, too. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, uh, I assure you, uh, the wall is down between their fathers. Uh, would it please you to see the epilogue? No, no epilogue! No, I no. pray you, for your play needs no excuses. <laughs> good job! Good, good. Go, go, good night. Yes, go. Out of the mansion. <laughs> the iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve lovers to bed. Tis almost fairy time. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled, beguiled the heavy gate of night. Uh, sweet friends, to bed. In this fortnight hold we this solemnity with nightly revels and new jollity. <laughs> Now, the hungry lion roars, and the wolf, he howls the moon, whilst the heavy plowman snores, all with weary tasks for done. Now, the wasted brands do glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, put the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now, it is the time of night, that the graves all gaping wide, everyone lets forth his sprite in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate team from the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream, now are frolic. <laughs> Not a mouse shall disturb this hollowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through this house give a glimmering light the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me sing and dance it trippingly. First rehearse your song by rote to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace Will we sing and bless this place? Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray. To the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. And the issue there create, ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three, ever true and loving be. And the blot of nature's hand shall not in their issue stand. Never mole, hair, lip, nor scar, nor mark prodigious, such as are despised in nativity, shall upon their children be. With this field do consecrate, every fairy take their gate, and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. And the owner of it blessed, ever in safety shall rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. <laughs> so good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends. And Robin shall restore amends. Thank you.